How's the world doing right now? How are companies doing? Well, I think in, in our world, the companies are using this moment to realize that massive innovation is called for and that businesses love the moment when they get to do massive innovation. So we're at one of these seminal moments in history where industry is about to transform and the companies that take advantage of it will thrive and prosper. What kinds of companies are leading the effort? Well, I think a lot of the smaller companies that do initiatives like the factory you just showed recently uh, by Method, you know, which is in the home care products and personal care product, is, in, is important. But the big companies are doing this. We see the real leaders have been in the furniture industry, the building trades, uh, because it really started as a major movement in this country in, in the um, architecture and construction. We now have green standards for buildings, as everyone knows. Yeah, because for the layperson like me, I'm thinking, oh, okay, so if you're a company, you just put some solar panels on and that makes you sustainable and green. But that is so not at all what you're talking about. There's such a deeper change that companies can actually undergo. The big change is the question of our values being translated to value instead of just looking at number. And we can say, what do we want to do less of and what do we want to do more of? So it's not about being less bad. It's about actually being less bad while we're being more good. So you see everybody driving the charts of getting rid of the stuff we don't want while we increase the things we do want. And less, that's, the, that's the difference. Less bad, more good is obviously a virtuous goal for anyone, but for a company, especially a smaller one, or and the bigger ones who face uh, investor pressure, the cost of it is, can be mind-boggling and hard for people to get their head around. What, uh, how can you debunk some of the myths out there in terms of the cost of being sustainable? Well, first of all, if you do these kinds of things, you find that the regulations sort of fall away. Because if you design this way, you're not regulated because there's nothing for society to fear. That can reduce costs. In the case of a textile we did, it was about 20%. So all of a sudden, it's 20% cheaper to make it because you don't have to file lots of paperwork and all your materials are safe, so your workers are happy. Those are the simple kind of things. But the, the big ones, if you want quick returns, is in CapEx. Because we've done green systems, like we did for Ford Motor Company's giant green roof in Michigan, that saved them $35 million day one in CapEx against chemical treatment plants and pipes, which is the equivalent with a car at a 4% margin of giving them an order for $900 million worth of cars day one. Wow. So this is the kind of thing you have to put in your head, and it's caused by leaders who have values who say deliver the value, but stick to our values so that the world wants more of us, not less. What project are you most proud of? Wow. I think writing Cradle to Cradle with Dr. Michael Browngart was a real privilege, and it's had so much effect on so many people around the world. It's become a textbook for sustainability. Even 20 years later, it's just, just exciting to see these ideas go out. In terms of, though, a development or some kind of project that you've worked on with a company, what would be the what, one of the highlights there? The highlight, I'd say, is right now in Amsterdam, we're building a giant project, and we have support from the industries there, the companies there, um, to do a circular economy hub. And so What's we're going to, it's a way of getting companies to engage with each other where we make things where we design what's next into what's now. So instead of a take, make, waste linear economy where we drop stuff off the end and it just depreciates away, mm -hmm. we actually design buildings, for example, to be able to be sold as commodities if they ever came apart so they always have value. If you look at products that are used as services, the, com the company that made the washing machine still owns the asset, so it doesn't get depreciated. It's still sitting there waiting for the company. And when we look at companies like Shaw Industries, which is owned by Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett realizes, and his people, that you're storing your raw materials on your customers' floors, and when they want a new carpet, you take it back, and it becomes new carpet, and you've just created a relationship that goes on. And, and materials don't need to be remined for these things. And that's putting the re back into resources mm. and putting the money back into your pocket instead of throwing it in a hole in the ground. Okay, so companies have signed on for this. What about governments? What about the public sector? What can they learn from companies? Well, commerce is the engine of change. And often governments chase businesses around. And the great thing about this is when the government shows up, to regulate, they discover they don't need to. And that is a really beautiful moment. And that's what they can learn, is that the government can benchmark against these astonishing good practices and just simply hold them out as the examples of what society is asking for. So we can say, we like these safe products. We'd rather have these than toxic products. You don't have to just wag your finger and say, bad, 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 mm -hmm. reduce your toxins. You can say, see these good people, copy them. It's not punitive, in other words. Right. It's, it basically, we have carrots and sticks. Oh, interesting. So regulators are sticks. 
business is carrots. So our job is to create carrots big enough to use as sticks. Something that we've seen in the investment community is an appetite for green bonds. So some kind of bonds that are linked to some kind of sustainability uh, investment. H has that at all changed corporate interest in being more sustainable? Has there been a flow through impact? I think there is. People are excited that there are actually things they can do that reflect you know, cost performance and aesthetics as conventional, but also have this green aspect. It's a very important idea, and it can be very cost effective for people. So, so they're so happy to know there. because they'd rather do this than do others. And we're also seeing new financing mechanisms like supply chain financing hmm. and companies that are very exciting. We're seeing develop like Green Seal, for example, where they, they're financing the invoices that are out there ready to be paid and they can create whole new databases using metadata and we see that as very exciting because that means we can put a qualification on the quantification as stuff moves around. So it's the internet of things all the way down to the molecule for the future.